Laura and Paul, uh, things have quieted down quite a bit here at the playground area near the merry-go-round. We do our, see some flare-ups up in the hills above. We're also shrouded in smoke at times, but a relief to see that tanker fly overhead just a few minutes ago, uh, showing us that the, the firefighting power is building at this hour. That wasn't, however, the case when we arrived here in this area shortly before 2 o'clock, and there were a lot of people using this park. Take a look at some of the pictures we shot when we, when we arrived here today. The fire at the time was burning up on the ridge here a good distance away, but all of a sudden we could see a wall of flame just charging down the eastern slope directly in our direction. At that point, an LAPD officer, a park ranger, using the speakers on their cars, immediately started zigzagging through Griffith Park, announcing evacuations. It was orderly. The folks here moved quickly, and everybody cooperated. The only minor snag was that there was a crew here filming a commercial, and they were unable to move one of their large semi-trucks out of the way. They did try. They were running. Finally, the crew said they bailed, leaving it behind, hoping for the best. Now, this fire did appear to be creating its own wind, which pushed the flames down the hill so fast, in fact, that within just about five minutes, they went from being a quarter mile away to just about a couple of hundred yards from where our live truck was set up. The flames literally were towering over us. We could feel the intense heat from that fire. It was too close for comfort, I can tell you, also too close for comfort for firefighters who also darted away with us. Now, the water drop helicopters doing a magnificent job of keeping the flames at bay. The pilots, I, I could say they were much like cowboys corralling cattle. They guided this fire across the steep slopes of dry brush that are just above the playground and picnic area, all the while being very cautious of the power lines that were shrouded in the thick smoke out here. Once again, at this hour, we continue to be socked in a fog of white smoke that periodically blows in our direction, but so far also a success in terms of evacuations. The park, the golf course, the LA Zoo, Gene Autry Museum, all evacuated without difficulty. They moved out quickly, giving these firefighters the space they have needed today to try to get a handle on this fire. We're reporting live from the picnic area in Griffith Park. I'm Jaime Garza, CBS 2 News. Latest, Jaime. And I'm going to step out of the way so you can see exactly what we're talking about right now. Investigators telling us that this white truck here headed south on Woodman Avenue apparently ran a red light and slammed into that eastbound bus there on the left-hand side. Let's take you up right now for a quick aerial view taken earlier today. Fire officials telling us luckily the light had just turned green for the bus, so it wasn't moving very fast when it entered the intersection and collided with that truck. The bus, though, was fully loaded with 125 passengers on board. Let's bring you down to the ground now and show you video that was taken moments after the collision. Here you can see an army of paramedics removing the 15 passengers who were injured, some of which were strapped onto stretchers. Two people who were riding in the truck were also hurt, but were being told the injuries all believed to be minor. Now you may remember that when the Orange Line was first put into operation, there was a string of collisions along this 14-mile corridor, and in response, the city added more lights and signs. Also, cameras were installed at problematic intersections like this one, and after a major PR campaign to make the public more aware of this bus route, well, it seemed that everything was working and those uh, accidents seemed to subside. But unfortunately, this afternoon at 345, we had another collision out here, but again, fire officials saying luckily, all injuries minor. Reporting live from Valley Glen, I'm Jaime Garza, CBS 2 News. Hi. Hello, everybody. In fact, you know, Thanksgiving is a time for friends and family to be together, but unfortunately, there are folks out there who cannot be with their loved ones today because, well, they're working. And that is the case here at Orange County Fire Station number four. But if you look at the dining room here, you will notice that not everybody are firefighters. That's because the families have come to them. And it's a good thing these guys are here today because it is a red alert day. And I think what red alert means is danger in the kitchen. There was a fire extinguisher right here. It is missing. So I think it's time to check in with Metro Chef Shane Sherwood, who's been uh, behind the controls of the gas burners. Shane, what are you preparing today? Uh, we got a traditional turkey meal. We got uh, two turkeys, one fried and then one that we did in a bag. And then we got uh, some sweet potatoes here. We got uh, bean casserole, and then we got mom's secret uh, recipe from, uh, for her stuffing. And then we got mashed potatoes on the stove here. So you're telling me this is mom's secret recipe? Mom's secret recipe. It's the best out there. Can you tell us what ingredients are in there? I can't do that. Mom wouldn't let me. She are you sure? Say. I'm sorry. And firefighters don't lie? Uh, no, no. No, definitely don't lie. Shane, whatever you say, whatever you say. Let's get back out here because there are a lot of very hungry people out here. And we want to talk to Brett Clark, who's been a firefighter for 13 years. He's here with his wife and three kids. And Brett, what does it mean to have your family at least come to the day you have to work? 
Well, this is like home away from home, and it's nice to have my family here to uh, have this special opportunity, so it's a joy. So it does make a, a difference for you. Absolutely, absolutely. And over here is Noel, and Noel, a lot to be thankful for on this Thanksgiving. Absolutely, I'm thankful that I'm here with Brett and my three kids and that we're healthy and we have good people to celebrate this Thanksgiving with. I want to show you this table one more time. Isn't this a beautiful sight here? But remember, we are at a working firehouse, so at any moment that alarm could sound, the guys in blue here could be jumping up and running out of here, and I've been told it's not unusual to have to put a plate of food together, throw it in the fridge, and then come back and eat a little later. So I want to wish you all a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you for letting us come in and share part of this day with you folks. We want to check in now at another fire station, this one in Roland Heights. We're gonna go down now and check with my colleague, Mark Hoogan, who has a very special story to share with you about a very special reunion. Mark?